All right, let's install. Try <laughs> trying out a distro recommended by the FSF. I can't spell. All right. So I got some time today to mess around with a distribution Linux, di oh, sorry, a GNU Linux distribution uh, that I wanted to try on a spare machine that I have here. Now this is a distribution recommended by the FSF Free Software Foundation that has completely free software. Um, I use, uh, I, yeah, I'm a Linux user to a degree, not, not a heavy one. But I just wanted to check out this distro and see uh, what kind of uh, pitfalls it has. So I'm going to take you right from the installation. I've never installed this before, so this is kind of like a real live, uh oh, real live distro. I am booting off of one of these. It's just a hard drive, USB, uh, USB hard drive. So let's get on with it. boot from the USB storage. <clears throat> okay, and now I'm going to select my distribution. And I have here pure OS. So let's run this. Well, maybe let's t let's test it on a live uh, live. Make sure it has no issues with the hardware I have on this machine and stuff like that. This machine is pretty old. It's probably five five six years old, which means it should have pretty good support. I think. So let's let this boot up. So if we look this up, uh, pure OS. It's a Debian ver. It's a. I think it's. Did I just read somewhere? It's a Debian. A derivative of Debian GNU Linux with an emphasis on privacy protection, where we have pre-installed the best privacy protecting software applications and allow you to easily encrypt your hard drive. Well, that's nice. Okay, so it looks like it's booting up. Looks like it's actually booted. Okay, so what do we have here? We have an install, we have a web browser, rhythm box, photos, LibreOffice is pre-installed, this is kind of cool. Let's launch that. Nice. Okay, what happened if LibreOffice is still loading? Okay, so I don't know what happens, what's happening with LibreOffice. I launched it, but it doesn't seem to want to come up here. 
LibreOffice Calc. Okay, well, I don't know what's going on here. Let me just install it. Let me install it. I have an SSD attached to this machine, so. Nothing seems to be working. Install Pure OS. I'll click it again. Oh, geez, that took a while. Oh, the system's not connected to the internet. One second, please. One second. See if I can get the internet working. Internets. Okay, that should that should do something. Would be helpful if I had the Ethernet cable plugged in. Maybe that's why LibreOffice wasn't working. Oh, it added I just got an added printer thing here. Added my printer. Look at that. So let me try LibreOffice again. Does it need internet access for some reason? That's odd. Okay, anyways, let's... Uh, should we install this from the live CD or should we just boot and install it? Let's just, uh, let's just go through here. So English... So I'm going to relaunch this again because it says I have no internet. So let's go to, okay, welcome, English, New York time zone, that's fine. Keyboard, English, very nice. Partitions, uh, yeah, so I have a crucial 256, erase this disk. What is my name? I'm just going to type in sysadmin. Name of the computer. I'll just put it pure OS. Password. Uh, I'm going to use one of these. All right. Sorry for that. You guys have a terrible view, but you get what's happening. Summary. It's going to create an MS DOS partition table on SDA. Okay, go for it. And we are off to the races and we are installing. So this is real fun. Anyways, I've just had the urge to switch back to Linux, to using Linux as a desktop, like a main desktop. Just, I don't know why. Uh-oh. Installation failed. Bad source. Lib yeah, I don't I don't know if it's just because I'm using this Yumi thing to multi to have this multi boot um, USB drive. So I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt in this case and I'm just gonna install it outside the GUI. Your OS install okay, English. 
English, US, American, no common CD-ROM drive was detected. You may need to load additional CD-ROM drivers from removable media such as driver floppy if you have such media available now. <clears throat> load CD-ROM load CD-ROM drivers from removable media. Okay, no. So it's got a problem with my CD-ROM, I guess. It's a good thing I'm not using that. Your CD-ROM may be an old Mitsumi or other non-IDE. In that case, you should choose which module to load the device to use. If you don't know which module the device are needed, look for some documentation or try a network installation instead of a CD-ROM. Manually select CD-ROM module? No, I'm just gonna leave it for now. Installation step failed. Uh, I'm gonna skip that and go to the next one. Okay, it's telling me no CD-ROM drive was detected again. And this is just failed. You can try to run the failing item again from the menu or skip it and choose something else. Okay. How do I skip it? Choose a next step in the install process. Okay. All right, so right off the bat, we got an installation problem. Let me see if I can skip it. Change debconf packages that use Packages that use DevCom for configuration prioritizing questions. The only questions of certain priority are shown to you. All less important questions are skipped. So let's hit low. I, I don't think I can uh, continue with this CD-ROM problem. I guess it thinks it's being installed from a CD-ROM. So maybe this was the wrong way to put this on the drive. But as you can see, these are the interesting things that happens with Linux. So if I want to download How to install from a USB drive. Open GNOME disk and navigate to your net. Press the choose a restore disk image. Okay. Start restoring and set Purize USB drive. Now no, reboot computer. Okay, so it wants me to, damn it. What if I just, let's just, uh, let me just unplug the CD-ROM from this machine. How about that? I think that's, might be a better option at this point. I don't like abort the installation. Yeah, abort. So I've unplugged the CD-ROM from the machine just so I can get through the installer. Or I hopefully you can get through the installer. Or I don't know, it might have the same problem, you know? OS. Install. All right, so we're back. Continue. United States. English. Detect and mount CD-ROM. I don't know why it needs to do that.
No comment. Fuck. Oh, the automatic detection of fantasy around the was supposed to module needed for accessing none. Oh, fuck, I don't know. None. Okay, so this thing has a friggin' bug in the installation. I don't know why I have to specifically load the ISO onto my USB key their particular way. I wonder if I just plug it, hold on a second. Okay, I'm gonna plug it back in. And abort. Yes, so I want to restart again. Let's try this again. I think it's the first time I've ever had this problem with Linux with it's like trying to, is there anything under advanced? Hardware detection tool? Let's try that. What does that do? Fail to load lib menu, fail to load. Jesus. So yeah, this is like, so far this is a pretty big fail. Uh, USB storage. Linux distributions. Pure OS 8. I've never had a problem with a CD-ROM detection. This is ridiculous. So install. English, United States, American English. Sure, manually select CD-ROM module, okay. There's a problem reading data from the removable media. Make sure that the right media is present. I don't know, it, well, it thinks it's loading from a CD-ROM. I don't know why, when it's obviously reading from this USB hard drive. Okay, so that's a, that's a bug in the installer. That's crazy. Um, how do I fix this? Good question. Good question. That's probably why when I wasn't able to load up uh, LibreOffice in live mode, because it thinks it's, look, it's looking for everything on the CD-ROM. Oh, fuck. I guess I can try Rufus. Let me just try Rufus, okay? Um, let, me, let me take a USB key here. Oops, this got messed up. Let me put the USB key here. And yeah, let me just take that. Let me run a Rufus against this FUS. -U 
multi boot ISO image pure OS. It's gonna wipe this. It's gonna wipe this key. So anything on this key? Uh, no, I don't need anything on this key, so we can wipe it. Try it this way. So it looks like using this external hard drive via USB is no worky, turkey. So I have to try another way. Can you guys even see what's going on here? Probably not. I don't know. One of these days I'll get a better camera set up, but let's put, okay. Number one does not the I'll just put has has installer issue with USB CD ROM detection. I mean, this should be pretty straightforward. I mean, if it's a, based on a Debian release, I, I don't know what, what's, what version of Debian is it based on? Uh, doesn't say. Oh, including Tor browser, DuckDuckGo, and EFF Privacy Badger. What's HTTPS everywhere? Privacy Badger blocks spy as an invisible trackers. Oh, nice. So it has Privacy Badger and what was the other one? HTTPS everywhere. So basically it rewrites any web requests to HTTPS. Okay, so let's freaking try this thing. Let's go. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Anyone join the stream? Not even close. Copying ISO files. Okay. So we can close that. So let's try from USB key. Here we go again. Abort. Continue. Yes. Okay. Okay, let's try this one. Oh. We're back. So English, US, American English. Oh, okay, good. So looks like the issue was with that Yumi software reading it off the hard drive. I had a multi-boot drive. So something, something on that didn't work out properly. Detecting network hardware. Can you guys really even see that? This is bad. This camera's bad. Very bad. You guys need to be up here, unfortunately. Focus. Let's 
going on here? This thing's not focusing anymore. Okay, so we're at the point here where it says your system has multiple network interfaces. Choose one as a primary interface. So this is, we're gonna use the LAN. Please enter the host name for the system. So I'm gonna pure OS. The domain name is part of your internet. Blah, blah, blah. Make sure same domain name yours. No, nothing. Set up passwords. So password for root. So this is the root password. I know it's not long, but this is just a test system. We'll be curious. So let's just put sysadmin as the user. So choose password for this guy. Oops, I think I screwed up this one. Configure the clock, Eastern. Detect the disks. Okay, so we're gonna use the entire disk on this SSD. Crucial, 275. Uh, all files in one partition, recommended for a new user. Yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Continue. Uh, can you change your disk? Warning, destroy all data, write changes to disk, yes. Okay, so it's copying data. Uh, let's let that roll for a bit. Shouldn't take too long. Oh, I mean the uh, USB key is not the fastest, but so that'll be our bottleneck. But anyways, what else? is going on here. You know, George Bush says uh, it's pretty clear Russia meddled in U.S. election. Twitter for turns first profit ever? How's Twitter making any money?
Okay, use a network mirror. Network mirror can be used to supplement software that's included in the city. Sure. Global goals find the mirror bureaus are closely on the network. Sure, Germany. Yes. Need to make the new system bootable, so crucial. I'm just going to update this. I'm going to say use uh, Rufus. Rufus. Okay, installation complete. Continue. Continue, continue, continue. Google hit with class action lawsuit over defective Pixel smartphones. Oh God, it's not good. I have one also. Paint this a budget. Google only sold defective Pixel and Pixel sizes of problems with microphones that prevent them from using calling voice or use for calling or voice function assistant functionality. It's from more of that. You know, the immediate technology was a customer's complain severe microphone issues to learn. Despite receiving hundreds of complaints from a bunch of made phones have factory after made the phones have factory, Google continues to sell the pixel phones without telling purchasers about the microphone defect. Okay, so, all right, let's pull the USB key out and let's boot directly from the SSD. What are you guys looking at here?
All right, sorry about that. Okay, very nice. Can you guys see anything? All right. So we've installed Pure OS. Now I'm going to launch LibreOffice, which loads very fast. That's nice. Okay, pure browser. I guess it's based, is it based on Chrome? Oh, Mozilla. So that's nice. Let's search. Oh, so it is using Google search. <clears throat> Thought it was, was it? Your browser designed by So that's nice. What else do we have here? Network. Okay, great. Um, rhythm box. <coughs> okay, there's some uh, radio. Let's see if the speakers work. Let's uh, try some college radio. University of Wisconsin. Let's load that. Oh, no, sorry. Play. Looks like audio is working. FM. Okay, so I don't have, I guess I need an account here. I want to register. Last FM, not logged in. Okay. Let's try ambient. Play that, maybe. How do I actually play this? <clears throat> to work um photos photo manager yeah look like a very basic photo manager what else do we have here boxes what's this oh 
like a virtual machine. Enter an address for the box you want to add. Addresses can be images of installation images, spice VNC, vert or libvert brokers. Oh, interesting. That's interesting. So we have here cheese, camera. Lucky. Okay, it has Thunderbird, text editor, and some GNOME utilities. Cody, Cody is pre-installed. Uh, Polari. Oh, this is a chat client. I guess that is one thing I do need. Actually, do I really need it? No. Let me log into my uh, Gmail here. 